So Cordelia and I met um, in Sierra Leone um, as part of a UCL and London School of Hygiene project um, and it was really through our conversations and talking with other colleagues over there that we had the idea of um, bringing together a sort of multidisciplinary uh, collection of articles. I think we worked with a number of colleagues from all different backgrounds and as you've said the sort of collaboration between different disciplines really led to a um, sort of quite exciting developments and so we thought creating a special issue where you pull all the developments that have happened together across all the different disciplines would really be something that would generate conversation and hopefully you know, be useful going forward to improve our understanding of Ebola. Previous outbreaks were tens or perhaps hundreds of people. This one was around 30,000 people. Um, it was also across multiple countries. And it was in countries that had never experienced reported outbreaks before. So previously, um, outbreaks had been confined to mainly the Democratic Republic of Congo, or previously Zaire, uh, Gabon, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Um, and the, the West African countries had never seen Ebola before, so that alone made it very different. Also, Ebola was kind of seen as a rural disease before, um, and in this epidemic, it moved out of rural areas and it hit the major cities of Monrovia in Liberia and um, Freetown in Sierra Leone, um, which were responsible for a lot of transmission. As you said, it was 30,000 cases. So that's, you know, 90 times greater than any previous outbreak, over 90 times greater, and bigger than all other outbreaks combined. Um, and we've only seen it in one or two countries before, but this had intense transmission across three West African countries with, then ice, with the cases and localised spread in three other African countries, three European countries, and in the United States. Um, and I also think in terms of size, the size of the international response was totally unprecedented as well. So I think for me that one word sums, sums it all up. So in my mind I think there's two main areas. There's scientific advancements and then there's also what we understand about how the disease has spread. And I think about them in two different ways. So in terms of scientific advancements, I think the key thing is really around vaccine um, development and vaccine policy. So this outbreak was absolutely unique and remarkable in the development of um, a pipeline for getting vaccines into clinical trials and so they can actually be used in an acute outbreak emergency setting. That's never been done before. And what was done in five months in this outbreak would usually take five or ten years to happen. So that's remarkable and will make a massive difference going forward for both Ebola and other infectious disease outbreaks. Um, and for me, I think that's really the main um, advance and the real great achievement of this outbreak. Um, I think a couple of other things we also did during this outbreak that we haven't done before. Um, so things like mathematical models were used for the first time in real time to inform um, public health interventions and we haven't had those technologies previously um, and also molecular techniques so sequencing to inform transmission dynamics so that you can target interventions better to those people who are transmitting the infection um, and then just in terms of understanding the infection I think we have a much better understanding um, of you need to really get to the cultural um, aspects to understand, you know, you have this viral disease, but in different settings it manifests in different ways according to the cultural and behavioural practices of that population. And I think there's many settings and at the early part of this outbreak where that wasn't always taken into account. So you didn't understand the cultural factors that were propagating it. For example, traditional burial ceremonies, which we now know led to massive increases in transmission. Um, in this particular setting and also implementing the interventions depends on getting cultural buy-in and making sure the interventions are culturally sensitive and it wasn't until we had community engagement and involvement of local communities that we were able to in this outbreak implement um, interventions successfully so I think for me they're the two main areas of real advancement.
the special issue has highlighted that the Ebola outbreaks were a real wake-up call to the international community and that the systems we had in place to deal with global, global public health emergencies weren't sufficient. Um, as well as highlighting the really huge missed opportunities, um, so the, the lack of advancement in understanding basic clinical management and how and when we should deploy interventions. Um, but n notwithstanding this, um, I think one of the other key things that's been shown from the special issue is that although the international response was very late to get going, once it did get going, it really did demonstrate impressive levels of cooperation and did ultimately you know overcome the outbreak um, and I you know I do think that is really impressive and there's people who risk their own lives to go and help in the outbreak and I think the international community does need to be indebted to all those people who have worked on it. I think for me um, it's a question of how broad the response was um, so uh, Cordelia mentioned the um, interventions and behaviour change that took place over the course of the outbreak and something that we really highlight in the special issue is really understanding behavioural change itself from, uh, from many different angles. So we use mathematical modelling, we use um, anthropology and we also use um, quantitative surveys, surveying people through the epidemic. Um, to use lots of different um, tools in order to really understand what proved to be fundamental to the, um, both the transmission of the disease but also its control. So understanding how people went to hospitals, how they sought treatment um, and how their behaviour changed um, ultimately um, to, to control the disease. And I mean, I agree with Katie, on top of that you absolutely have to include affected communities in you know, um, implementing strategies and working with them to help everything be culturally sensitive. It's not going to work otherwise. I do think the WHO, who leads global health response in these sorts of um, areas, has recognised that their structural organisational capacity was inadequate and have already, already made um, changes so I you know I do think there are steps forward but there needs to continue to be that um, with constant reflection and evaluation of what went well and what could always be improved. Uh, in terms of Ebola specifically I think having a vaccine now um, will improve things as well because it you know it gives you a strategy another tool that we can add that can decrease um, transmission and prevent cases happening. So I think that will have a big impact going forward for Ebola specifically.